In this video, we'll be discussing what an intensivist is, how to become an intensivist, and what the role of an intensivist is inside the hospital. Hello and welcome. I'm the Intense MD. I'm a double board certified intensivist who's giving you an inside look into the hospital and the critical care unit. So your first question probably is, what's an intensivist? I get this question a lot when people say, what do you do for work? And I say, I'm an intensivist. And they're like, what is that? Sounds cool, but what is it? Intensivist was just added to the dictionary in 2020 due to the pandemic and our recent press, but intensivists have been around for a couple decades now. An intensivist is a physician who cares for and treats patient in the intensive care unit. So how does someone become an ICU doctor? So in general, you do four years of college, four years of medical school, about three years of residency, depending on what type of program you're in, and two years of fellowship. So I'm gonna use myself as an example. I'm a medical intensivist. I did four years of college with a pre-medical focus. I was a chemistry major. So a very common misconception about, you know, becoming a doctor and being pre-med is that you have to have one particular major or one particular major is better than the other to increase your chance of getting into medical school. But the biggest thing is you need to complete the prerequisites required for medical school. And in the United States, the prereqs for med school are the same. After college, you do four years of medical school. So two, first two years are basic science courses, mostly classroom. You do do some rotations in the community or at the hospital, but for the most part, it's in a classroom. And then the last two years are your clerkships where you rotate through the hospital and get to learn about the different specialties and decide what you want to apply for for residency. After medical school, everyone who practices medicine does a residency. And I did internal medicine. That's a three-year program. Some people do emergency medicine, anesthesia, surgery, pediatrics. And all of those programs have varying lengths of time. Some of them are four years, some of them are five years, um, but myself, I did three years. So in internal medicine residency, I did rotations on the floor in the intensive care unit. I saw clinic patients, learned about internal medicine in general, and also did some elective rotations and subspecialties, such as cardiology, nephrology, infectious diseases, to learn more about those particular subspecialties. After residency, you can move on and focus on a, one particular branch of internal medicine, for instance, and become further specialized in that field, and that requires fellowship training. In fellowship, you focus on that particular field. You go more in depth in your specialty. I did two years of critical care medicine, so I did rotations in different ICUs. There are many different types of intensive care units. For instance, there's the medical intensive care unit, surgical, neuro, cardiovascular surgery. Um, I did not do pediatric ICU because as an internist, I only take care of adults, but you know, a pediatrician can go on and subspecialize in critical care and be a pediatric intensivist. And then after fellowship, you take your boards in that particular specialty. And that is how I ended up being double board certified. I am certified in internal medicine and critical care medicine. In critical care fellowship, you learn more specifically how to take care of the ICU population. During my internal medicine residency, for instance, I was all throughout the hospital. I'd take care of patients on the regular floor. I would take care of patients in the intensive care unit. I would have clinic patients to attend for, and I would also do elective rotations where I would all around the cardiology team, nephrology team, infectious disease team, different medical subspecialties to learn more about that specific branch of medicine. In critical care fellowship, you spend additional time training to take care of the ICU population. So things that we learn are the procedures that we do, such as 
intubations, central lines, arterial lines, chest tubes, bronchoscopies. There's a whole host of procedures that we do in the ICU that we fine tune during our fellowship. After internal medicine residency, some people might opt for a three-year combination program with pulmonary or the study of lung diseases and critical care. You may also do a one-year critical care fellowship training after doing a prior fellowship such as cardiology, nephrology, infectious diseases. So there are many different pathways you can take to become an intensivist and what your specific job looks like may depend on what your background training is. For instance, me, I don't see children. I'm not a pediatrician. I don't have any extra training beyond med school in pediatrics, so I do not tend to pediatric patients, whereas a pediatric intensivist only takes care of children. So now that we've established what an intensivist is, how to become an intensivist and the different types of intensivists, what is my specific role, day-to-day -day job within the hospital? So as an intensivist, I only work in the hospital setting and my primary role is taking care of the patients within the critical care unit. My day typically starts with evaluating the patients there, doing rounds, going bed to bed, patient to patient, leading rounds with the critical care team and discussing which each patient needs for the day, what their plan of care is, if we need to get any other subspecialists involved. And that's the bread and butter of what I do is caring for this specific population of patients housed in the intensive care unit. Some other things that I might be called to do is running to an emergency within the hospital. So sometimes there's what's called a rapid response on the floor and this means a patient who's admitted to the general medical floor or elsewhere in the hospital looks like they might be doing worse. It looks like they might need life support. So we'll get called and they'll have us evaluate if this patient is appropriate to move to the intensive care unit. Sometimes we will stabilize them on the floor. We'll evaluate what's going on and say, you know, this is our recommended treatment plan. And if they don't get better, we'll move them. If they do improve, we'll tell the team taking care of that patient to call us if they need us and will follow along closely if anything else happens. Sometimes they do not improve or we can tell right from the get-go that they need to move down to the critical care unit, so we'll admit them to the ICU and continue their care there. Something else that we'll get called to is a code blue, and this means respiratory or cardiac arrest within the hospital. So in a code blue, usually when our team comes, they're already in progress with CPR. Some people think code blues are very chaotic. They could be, um, but typically our role is to leave the code blue and help resuscitate the patient. We'll get information about what's going on with the patient, what happened, if there were any events that led up to the heart stopping. We'll prescribe emergency doses of medicines. We might do some emergent procedures such as intubation, which means putting a tube into their mouth, through their vocal cords, into their airways to connect them to a ventilator and assist them on life support that way. And depending on the result of the code blue, the patient, if they are resuscitated, might get moved down to the intensive care unit for further treatment. With our patients, we'll manage their life support measures, such as I mentioned before, the ventilator. There are other medications that require close monitoring that we only administer in the ICU. Like I said, we do emergencies. We may also have family meetings where we discuss what's going on with the patient, with their family. We'll discuss if the patient had any prior wishes, such as resuscitating, do not resuscitate, if they have a prolonged course on life support, what they would want in that situation and unfortunately, a lot of breaking bad news. Being an intensivist is a very active job. No two days are the same. I work day shifts and night shifts, so those shifts have some subtle differences between them. For instance, on nights, we typically don't do rounds. We do more admissions to the intensive care unit and dealing with emergencies. I could be rounding in the ICU first thing in the morning and then get called away to a code blue or to a rapid response and I have to go up and do procedures, interrupt rounds, and then come back down with a patient and continue my day. I might get called to the emergency room to admit a bunch of patients uh, earlier in the day, later in the day. No two days are the same. 
It's a very exciting job and it's a very rewarding job. Thank you for watching my first video. If you have any ICU questions, ICU experiences, any suggestions for videos, please leave it in the comments below. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter on both social media platforms. My handle is at the intense MD. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.